Hello everyone, my name is Michael McCarhill. I'm a senior lecturer in criminology at the University of Hull, and I'm here to say a few words about a level six module called surveillance and social control. In a nutshell, this module examines the social impact of new surveillance technologies that are used mainly in the context of policing and criminal justice. Surveillance defined as uh, close observation of suspects, of course, is something that's always existed in every society. However, many believe the emergence of computers, surveillance cameras, smartphones, and other technological devices, um, that we've seen the emergence of a new surveillance that's become embedded into everyday interactions. This means that monitoring, surveillance, watching can take place at a distance from miles away. And it facilitates the monitoring of whole groups and populations rather than just individual suspects. So uh, the module addresses um, a number of issues Firstly, it will ask, how did we end up living in a surveillance society? Uh, for example, in 1984, the year of George Orwell's Big Brother, there were virtually no open street CCTV surveillance cameras operating in the UK. However, by 2003, it was estimated that there were 4.2 million surveillance cameras operating in this country. What happened is an interesting question. Secondly, we'll look at how social scientists have tried to make sense or theorize surveillance. This will include uh, the work of Michel Foucault, who famously believed that the metaphor of the panoptic prison, where the many are watched by the unseen eyes of the few, is the best way of thinking about contemporary surveillance practices. Alternatively, we'll look at the work of Giles Deleuze and his Societies of Control thesis, where he argued surveillance is no longer confined to institutional settings like the prison nor does it just involve people watching people. Instead, surveillance has become a routine built-in feature of everyday interactions. And it's directed at the digital persona, the electronic version of ourselves, rather the embodied person. Thirdly, we'll go inside the CCTV control rooms and the police stations and the probation centers to look at empirical research that's examined how surveillance is used in practice. For instance, how do CCTV operators decide who to watch and why? And what implications does this have for privacy and social justice? Fourthly, drawing upon my own uh, ESRC funded research, we'll look at how people experience and respond to be monitored by new surveillance technologies. So this includes empirical research and observational research with school children, political protesters, police officers, homeless people, prolific offenders, uh, to see how they experience and react to being surveilled by these uh, new technologies. Finally, we'll examine many of the social, political, and ethical issues raised by the use of these new surveillance technologies that are used in a diverse range of surveillance settings. Uh, so that's it from me. Uh, thank you for listening and hope to see you at some point so that we can discuss uh, many of these fascinating issues on the rise of a surveillance society. Uh, bye for now.